Chris Crisanti joins us now. Christopher Crisanti with the MAI uh, Capital here on the equity markets. Chris, it's a stew out there right now. How do you organize your thought process right now in terms of factors? Is it value, growth, momentum, and the other large ideas that give you conviction to invest? Which matter? Well, you know, Tom, uh, if you've been an equity manager a long time, you have a little humility and know that the bond market is usually older and wiser than you are. Uh, but this time, um, it, I tend to disagree with it. And let's get back to Jonathan's point. Boy, we're getting conflicting signals. And I feel like the bond yeah. market is saying, what are you going to believe, me or your own eyes? And, <laughs> because our own eyes are seeing GDP growing at high single digits, nominal GDP growing at 13%. And that matters because earnings are nominal. Wages, you and I think of as nominal. If you get an 8% raise, you don't say, well, that's just a nominal raise. Um, so earnings are strong across all our portfolio sectors. So um, I just think that the bond market here is wrong and that, we're, that rates are going to be headed higher when the Fed starts to taper. I, I get the, the conflict, but you have an $80 billion a month buyer who's going to leave the market. And that's a big deal. The number one question, I think, in economics, Chris, is the number one question for the equity market as well. Demand's really strong. How expensive will it be to get supply through? especially on the labor market, too. Chris, what does that mean for your equity call, looking out? You know, I, I think But the, the, the biggest story that hasn't really been covered is that a year ago, on forward earnings, the S&P was in the mid to high 20s. It was very expensive. Now, because of the unbelievable earnings growth, the S&P is at about 19 times what our run rate of third quarter earnings is annualized. So we've kind of grown into a reasonable valuation. That can be messed up, Jonathan, if rates rise too quickly or if we see our biggest threat, as I see it, is wage inflation for next year. So I, I'm much more in the fire camp than the ice camp, and that's what I'm afraid of. Which sectors have the particular wage pressures that you're most, most watching out for? Boy, you, you know, Lisa, at first I would have said uh, things away from the, the reopening sectors, uh, 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 industrial, things like that. But now we see it all over the place. You, you can't get... Um, uh, things as simple as McDonald's workers and things like that, but also things like crabbers. There's <laughs> there's not enough crabs. The masons, there's not enough masons. There's not enough auto workers. Um, and while commodities will, you know, go up and down, wages go in one direction and tend to, tend to stick there. So that's what we're concerned about. What do revenues do? I mean, the heart of the matter for the bulls is revenues continue to outpace and that margins do better than well, even with rising wages. Do you have a conviction that revenues do well? Yeah, I do. I do, Tom. And, and I think part of that is a little bit of inflation, which will make the revenue line, which, of course, is <clears> nominal, look <throat> a little better for reporting companies. But part of it is also, look, we paid $5 trillion for this recovery. We ought to enjoy it. And that'll certainly spur more revenues just about every sector from energy and travel to technology and communication. So uh, I'm, I'm upbeat on that for the next year or two. Chris, just to wrap things up, what's on the shopping list if we get some form of index level correction? Broad sure. correction. What's on the shopping you know, list if we get that? Starting from the assumption that my job is to make people money and not be terribly interesting, internet advertising, when you think it's a quote-unquote nice model, that's like calling Katie Ledecky a decent swimmer. You know, we have these gigantic companies like Google and Facebook that are enormous, but still growing the top line to get to Tom's revenue point by 30% or more. YouTube will have more revenue next year than Netflix, and they don't have to pay for their content. So this internet advertising thing is not just here to stay, but it's much stronger than most people think. And I would invest in those companies, even though they've done great, if there is any pullback. Let's repeat that line, Chris, so it's not lost. YouTube will have more revenue than Netflix, and they don't have to pay for the content. Chris, that's unreal. Right.